Okay. There you go. Good evening, everybody. Uh, this special city council meeting in Wood Creek, Texas, uh, May 29th, 2024, at 6 30 uh, p.m. Thank you all for being here. I will um, ask that everyone rise uh, for a moment of silence and then stay standing for, I mean, for the pledges and then for the moment of silence and then stay standing for the pledges. Mm -hmm. Moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor of the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the heavens, one state under God, one and indivisible. Then we have one more that wants to speak. Did you want to sign it for public comment? Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, he's signing. We can go ahead and take the roll. Yes. Mayor Jeff Rasco. Here. Mayor Pretender Deborah Hines. Here. Council Member Linnea Bailey. Here. Council Member Chris Grimmer. Here. Council Member Bob Hambrick. Here. Council Member Krista Richardson. Here. We are the corner. Thank you. And we will lead off with the public comments. Let's remind everybody that we keep it to three minutes. So. Okay. And um, and we um, I mean we can't really respond to you, but you know we can certainly listen. So um, we will start with uh, Mr. Brian Webb. Let's let Bob go first. He's got. I'll go first. Uh, I have the I have the document paper. Yeah, I'm going to present to the mayor. Absolutely. And to our mayor pro tem, and our council member, and my council member, and our council member, and our other council member. Okay, and I'll just read the letter to you. My name is Robert Azar, and I'm here on behalf of three other uh, property owners on Deerfield Street. Go ahead and stay seated. The camera can't see you. Do what? I'm okay, sitting Yeah. There you go. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, uh, council. Uh, Deerfield Street is an absolute embarrassment. Over the last 15 months, City Council has teased us with a plan that would upgrade our street. You have even posted twice on our front doors notices of next week. We have asked in writing and verbally to explain to us why our street is picked last in the master plan of street improvements for the city of Wood Creek. We find it hard to believe that many of the now completed streets were more deserving than our Deerfield Street. Deerfield has approximately 54 current addresses with uh, approved building permits at the end of our road for another eight. Deerfield is plus or minus a quarter mile in length. Understanding that our street is a multifamily, it is an embarrassment to market our property to quality tenants. It is not fair for current tenants or landlords looking to improve our properties. The above petitioners request in writing a history of the selection process as to which roads were deemed necessary to improvements and in order of priority. Deerfield current petitioners represent 20 of the 54 addresses now active in our street. We have been the leading landlords in improving the quality of life, quality of the property, and for 14 years average in paying our taxes. We deserve better. We have heard, from the, heard about the grants we have heard about the need for endangered species reports. We have heard about the drainage. All we hear over the past two years is words. It's time for action. Should you need to take from your general funds and reimburse your coffers once a so-called grant is issued, I'd say it's time to do that, and that's a great idea. This is not a threat, but we will seek legal counsel as to what the property owners can and cannot do towards the movement of paving our street. We are united and we will continue in our effort to make this happen. Please provide answers to our request in writing. Please outline the council's process and the determination of which roads were deemed necessary 
and how the determination and priorities were established with the road improvements to Wood Creek to date and your current plan and frame for the improvements of our road. I know a lot of you weren't on the council at the time that some of this still was done, so it may be need to be refresh your history. I should uh, be good for you to refresh, refresh your, uh, what's going on. But that's an absolute disgrace. I've seen this road here paved twice in 14 years. You have some evidence there. I yield and expect to, some answers. I'll be the spokesman for the three, uh, three property owners in the next meeting. Next uh, meeting, we'll have more there too. We're, we're committed. Were you going to think about where I am? I'd like to let our tenants have sure. their, their turn and then I'll go last. Um, okay. Shay? Shay? Yeah. Um, I'm Shai. <clears throat> I live at 10 Airfield and I'm a tenant there. I've been living there for almost four years. July will be four years. And I've had personal experience with the potholes and the um, the danger, honestly, that it poses because there's people that walk on, there's no sidewalks, which fine, most of the places around here don't have sidewalks. But when you have no sidewalks and you're trying to dodge potholes, I have accidentally almost hit pedestrians and I drive safely and slowly on my road. And it's just, um, it's almost like Deerfield's like the little forgotten corner of of Wood Creek and the roads are horrendous. Um, so, and it's it's just a constant trying to dodge potholes and miss people and there's kids that play outside and ride their bikes and it's a nice neighborhood and we pay good money for rent there too. And what our living conditions in our homes don't match the outside at all. So I just wanted to make sure that it was also known that it's, it's an actual danger as well. Um, for pedestrians and drivers. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jessica. I literally wanted to say the same thing. <laughs> like, there's children playing, kids getting off the bus. So it's either endanger your vehicle. I, I drive a very low vehicle or endanger somebody else or completely stop traffic. And then other cars, you know, at a busy time can't get in. It's so honest to God dangerous. Mm -hmm. The road causes a big danger. That's what I came to say. <laughs> I have a kid. My my cousin lives two houses down from me. She has a small child. He's constantly playing outside. So just just wanted to let y'all know aware, be aware of how actual dangerous it is, not just cosmetically, but the danger that it's causing for for us that live there. Any other tenants on Fairfield? So my name is Brian Webb. I own uh, five Deerfield and 10 Deerfield. And um, as my tenant was saying, you know, it's Deerfield's kind of looked at as the forgotten corner. It's the forgotten corner, except for if somebody leaves a, a washing machine on the front porch, you guys are Johnny on the spot to, to tell us that we're in violation. Um, my property taxes on my property went up 52% last year, 52%. And I'm sure they're up again this year. I haven't seen it. So we're we're responsible owners, but as people are saying, this is this is ridiculous. I mean, I've I've had the property now for 12 years, and the potholes have been there for 12 years. And I get you guys are probably all residents of Wood Creek, and you wouldn't put up with this on your street for five minutes. We've been putting up with it for over a decade. So I understand that you know maybe there's a grant in place. Is Wood Creek only going to fix it if somebody else is paying for it? Or should Wood Creek go ahead and pay for it? And as Bob said, reimburse it when the grant comes in. But if the grant takes another year or two to get a solution for somebody else, are we going to wait that long? Why don't we figure out how to get it fixed? And at a minimum, why can't we get it patched? Let's get the, the potholes at least patched. Because you're going to have to do that before you can repave it. So it seems like there's an awful lot we can do. I think people are starting to let you know there's safety issues. We're going to be on the record that you guys know that there's safety issues. And if you choose to not do anything or say we're going to wait until the feds give us a grant, that's not right. We're paying our taxes. We paid our taxes. Our tenants pay their rent. They love living here. We want to be good citizens, but you guys as the council need to be a good 
representative of the city and take care of our street. Thank you. Mayor, we are allowed to do one thing and I would like um, on the next agenda, this issue and see if we can have an updated report on what is happening. Um, I know the city manager previously talked about what he had done. We can get a statement of facts. Yes. He did inform us that potholes had been built. Granted, I don't live on the airfield, so I did not drive over there and check. The grant was awarded. So that is there. Um, there is a process to that. There is also money left over in the bond project to fund additional road improvements. The purpose of seeking a grant for the airfield was to do precisely what y'all are arguing about, meaning stop treating it like the little sister. Give it respect, give it the work it needs. That grant will provide for better work than what was done through the rest of the city on a portion of Deerfield, the rest of the city is before. So it, it will be getting better and more quality work. That's not a matter of much words. Um, it is a bunch of words. Uh, again, we heard so this. with that in mind, yes. So grants take cross time. Yes. We've applied. It's been awarded. You're now in the next phases. It will happen. Well, we. I want to know why we're in the next phase. What was the priority of picking the street? We, we can't. We can't. We can't we can only please answer that. Please answer that. I request that in writing from back to the mayor. Yeah. And actually, I'd be happy to meet with y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, outside of council meeting, like okay. any time. Yeah. Anytime. Okay. That'd be great. We could walk the street. I mean, All streets okay. are given Just out of curiosity, why was there a grant process for one street versus a bond process? For because the it qualified city? for a grant process and earned us about half a million dollars to pay yeah. for extreme work. But only to be spent on the street. On your right. right. alone. So you all will have half a million dollars dedicated to a fraction of the street size of the rest of the city stretched over like a, basically a mile, the same kind of investment. So we should get sidewalks and all that. <laughs> <kind of stuff. laughs> the plans have been presented. They had to go back to the drawing board. At that time, pedestrian safety was in, implemented. The Good. next Good. round of plans might look a little different. All statements yeah. of fact. That's all we can do. We can't get into the Thank you. That's, that's, that's great. great information. Maybe next Thank week we can see the plans. We yeah, don't see the plans. Last meeting. Next meeting, we can no, see the plans. They were posted. Oh, were they? Okay. Previously, they're in it. But again, okay. they they had to be rethought. There were some things that were missing that were a little bit off for what our city needs. So if you look at those plans, they might not be what is ultimately brought back. They, there are a huge team of professional engineers addressing this. Um, basically, if anyone's getting gold star treatment, it is actually Deerfield. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there is a, a time mm -hmm. component to that in regards to prioritizing of streets. All streets were prioritized. All streets were paved. Deerfield, because of the grant, that is the only reason why there is a timeline. I do encourage you um, to watch the city manager report from the 5-8 council meeting. I think that video is online. And there's chapters at the bottom of the timeline. Um, and that report was specifically on your bill. That's 5 8. 5 8. So if you like just miss your mouse on that yep. timeline, you'll see the chapters. And just look Great. at the report by city manager. Thank you. That was very important. And you can email any of us at any point in time. I apologize. This is, if you have been emailing anyone, it was not shared with me personally. And I would bet many of the council members have the same. Uh, this was our first start of the long process to keep reminding me every month. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to do it, yep. right? You'll we'll see a much bigger clientele here next month, believe me. I, I know you're not joking. Yeah, I know. And, and we do appreciate the comment. We want to be, we want to be good. You know, good owners, and you are. That's all we're trying this to do. Is when you wake up one morning a year ago and you see next week your street is going to be paid and it's not, and then the next month you say, okay, now we're ready. Here's another flyer on your door. Yeah. What happened to those grants a year ago? And like I said, a year and a half ago, a lot of you weren't even on the council member. But twice last year in 2023, there are flyers. Somebody had to take the time to walk to our door and put a flyer that says, 
watch next week your car. We're going to be paving your road. People actually came by and knocked on our doors and asked, like, and it was kind of alarming at first, like, how much do you make a year? And I'm like, that was easy. And, um, yeah, people walked around and asked, like, our, our yearly income, telling us that this is for roads. And sometimes they will come and it looks like maybe they filled a couple potholes and then it rains once and it's right back to the way. So. Well, that, that one city council we had where they hired a guy part time with a bag, whatever it was, and he walked the streets with his truck and he cut a bag and threw it in the hole and put some water on it. Did this? Some of you may know what I'm talking about. That was yeah. embarrassing. That was absolutely a joke. I don't know how much money he spent on that guy or that idea, but whoever had that idea would be fired or all. They do not no, they don't <laughs> yeah. we need that. that was okay. No, hold on. We, we thank you. you. Thank you. Comments. We'll see you next uh, month. Public comments is a strange time because you know we want to have a conversation, um, and we're not allowed. We'll see you, you next know, month. So, yeah. But you have my card. You know I will. Come here. I will meet with you anytime, anymore. Thank you. If I had nice meeting, that's a proud proud oil in my car. I take one with water with me, but I didn't. Uh, no, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, first item on the regular agenda is to discuss take appropriate action on the resignation of the city manager, Kevin Rule. And I move. I move that we accept the resignation of city manager Kevin Rule. I second. Okay, so you're gonna break this into two pieces. All right, thank you. It's uh, a, a formality. Um, he has submitted his resignation and the letter is in the packet, publicly posted for everyone to see. So. Okay, um, any discussion on this piece of it? Okay, the motion is to accept the resignation of city manager Kevin Rolls. So um, let's go ahead and call the roll. May I pretend they were Hines? Aye. Councilmember Lene Bailey? Aye. Councilmember Chris Bernard? Aye. Councilmember Bob Hambert? Aye. Councilmember Krista Richardson? Aye. Thank you. All right. Five eyes and a day that passed unanimously. We're going to take up the qualification. I move that we approve the posting of qualifications after edit and approval by Mayor Rasko. I second. I'm sorry, after edit and it is an approval, and approval by the mayor. I have, I have one question. What kind of edits would that would that be as far as posting qualifications? And how would it be different than the previous qualifications that we had? Um just working from the from the draft that we got, this is what went out um, two years ago. And um, there is a couple of things. I'm um, talking about like reporting relationships um, was one. Um, I had a question. I had a couple of questions, you know, just in, in general. Um, and then you know, people had a chance to look at it and, and had some other, but I mean, there's nothing of, you know, tremendous substance. Um, you know, some of it is just updating. So there was some idea of putting the, the RFQ in this packet. It's a little bit rushed to get into that and then trying to edit that all together as a group right now. The concept being, we're going to approve the posting for the job right through this. We need to tweak the job qualifications as we've already talked about. There's a, a couple of things like fund you and the new website for the for the our website, right? That somebody would ideally have previous training in. Now, if anyone has additional edits or things, I think it's very appropriate to send them to Mayor Rasko. There's, Typically, the RFQ is a little bit of an administrative function, so not all of them have to come before council for council edit. Council can also request it to come back for, forward, but the idea being that, like, you know, just to go ahead and get the process going and knowing that we had a couple edits, so we didn't have a final draft to get in time for everybody in front of this for this meeting, um, if that makes sense. So the proposal is look it over, get it, update, and were approved at that point, pre-approved at that point to get it out to the proper posting authorities, CML, newspaper, et cetera. That's what you're suggesting? Yes. 
everybody had a chance to look at it and see if there's any updates they would like to see. That would be important. This is, can we? Um, can I? Can I just? And this is Wednesday. Um, if you could have those to me by Monday, is that fair enough? What I have is um, what was previously posted. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I hadn't gone through it carefully, but pretty thorough. It's, but is that timeline acceptable to you? Councilmember Bailey is what Mayor Roscoe was asking. If if you did want to review it and provide edits to Mayor Roscoe, is Monday an acceptable timeline? And are you okay with the qualifications being posted after that? That's what we're considering. Yeah. 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 And then you'll forward the edits to me. Oh, I'll be working with you on the <laughs> So any further discussion? What time Monday? Well, my office hours are usually two to four, but um, I've been spending, you know, as much time as I can up here. So um, I haven't looked at my schedule for Monday, but I would just say if you have it by noon Monday, that'd be plenty of time. And if I can get word from everybody before then, I'll just get started. With it. So I'd already done a couple of things. I mean, it is like this one. So, so, um, so uh, let's go ahead and stick with the roll call vote for for the discussion on the, the second motion. So we're voting to approve the posting qualifications after edit and approval by Mayor Rusk. Okay. Councilmember Lene Bailey. Aye. Councilmember Chris Grammer. Aye. Councilmember Bob Hendricks. Aye. Councilmember Krista Richardson. Aye. Mayor Pretend Deborah Hines. Aye. Bob Collins and the motion passes. Um, item number two we we'll discuss and take appropriate action with we'll removing uh, Mr. Rule and retaining Mayor Resco and Mayor Pretend Hines as Texas Regional Bank signatories. And that's a kind of a in the motion in a second. I move that we approve resolution re, not, resolution number 2024-05-29-01 as placed in the packet, removing Kevin Rule as a bank signatory and retaining the remaining ones. A second. Yeah, this is a formality. They have to have it in the box. So essentially, we already did this thing resolution naming me. Now we're just removing Kevin, and then when we do hire a new city manager, we'll have to do it again <laughs> to place them back on. Any further discussion? All right, we'll go ahead and take the roll, please. Councilmember Chris Grammer? All right. Councilmember Bob Hander? All right. Councilmember Krista Richardson? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Deborah Hines? All right. Councilmember Lene Bailey? Aye. Mm -hmm. No nays, and we'll move on to item number three, which is to discuss and take appropriate action on adopting the amending ordinance for Title Three Administration, which is in Chapter Thirty, the governing body. Um, uh, and motion. I move that we amend ordinance Title Three, Chapter Thirty. I second. I was going to state the actual thing, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> the item I'm wishing for us to consider this evening is the one provided by our attorney. The one in the packet is essentially a placeholder. It did have extra things for consideration on it that could be discussed and brought back at a later date, but essentially due to the nature of um, the purpose of this meeting in particular, the ordinance provided by the city attorney only seeks to amend one portion on section B. So if you look at this copy that does not have a watermark on it, um, if you look at line number 40 and 41, it says in the event of a vacancy in the position of city manager, or sorry, city administrator, the mayor shall have all the power and authority provided to the city administrator in section 30-15. Um, the goal of this being 
to keep the city running, obviously, um, and to eliminate any kind of confusion as to who is in charge of what at this point in time to keep the business streamlined. That is correct. Exactly right. And, and just a little back to it. Um, we went through this um, when city manager Lewis left, and we were sort of, sort of, you know, question marks as to you know who could do what, and you know the mayor is not considered staff, and the vendors wouldn't work with anybody that's staff, um, and we never went in and amended the ordinance after that. And so um, when Kevin Rule left, I called the city attorney and said. What do we do? You know, I know I can't be, you know, acting city manager. I can't hold two titles. None of us can hold, you know, two titles at the same time like that. Um, so he said, said you just need to adjust your ordinance. That so they said that if the if the city manager is not in place, that the mayor takes the you know takes over those those duties until you know, obviously the city manager is in place. So that's all it does. Questions, discussions, points of order. All right, so we'll call the roll, please. Councilmember Bob Hamrick? No. Councilmember Krista Richardson? Aye. Mayor for Tim Deborah Hines? Aye. Councilmember Lene Bailey? Aye. Councilmember Chris Grummer? Aye. Motion passed. All right, the ayes have it. Four ayes, one nay. Motion carries. Um, any announcements? I move well, never mind. I think that the things for the next agenda. Um, I back up with Councilmember Grummer. Yeah, the, the G12, yeah, it's, not on the, it's not on the agenda. We can use. Um, Could I have a point of information on the June? So I wasn't at the last May meeting. Um, I've heard that something or some things have been moved, were tabled to that meeting. All the financial things. Yeah, all those financial things. So there are going to be a very crowded. Yes. And there are also there are also some. Um, some routine annual things that we need to do that are on that agenda that the city secretary has already um, uh, put into a draft, um, including the election schedule, budget schedule, calendar, um, and some other things that, that we just have to do as part of the annual process. So I don't have an announcement, but I would like to request that maybe the mayor consider holding a, a coffee here. And we personally invite the Deerfield residents to attend. And obviously, we can vote it publicly. So anyone can attend. But I think I'd like to assist in clearing up some of their confusion and concerns and then making sure they just have a direct line moving forward so they feel, you know, uh, informed on the topic. Um, Rather than a formal meeting. You know, can you more no, conversational? I'm, I'm all for it. We've done before for similar projects. I don't think we'll be able to Thank you, Mayor. That would be wonderful. Just like I said, I'll meet with you anytime, anywhere. I mean, I, I, um, and, and we can't discuss it. That's not on the agenda. So um, just as far as it goes, we'll go ahead and move forward with that. Um, there's no further to entertain well, questions. Someone reminded me this may not, this may just be administrative. But that we need to apply for Fourth of July permit. No, no, we don't. It's in the ETJ and at the BFW. For for in the parade for floats. Oh, oh, if we're going to have a. That's yeah. Not, okay. Not a permit. I mean, so so a parade in the Fourth of July thing. That's just an application if we're going to yeah. have a float in the. Oh gosh, I thought you were talking about an event here, like the no, fireworks thing. I was like, what? Yeah, my heart started beating. <laughs> okay, no. So, who's a member of the chamber? Karen. Oh. No, I thought maybe one of I know I am. Um, and oh, I know the city is. I was spelled from my own. 
So yeah, I'm just, I'm just, um, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I would love to have this city representative and, and yeah, again, that was fun. So, okay, put that on the list. Now, now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. All right. Well, I can step in. Thank you. Okay. Not 20